And now, live from your sister's closet, it's the Mean Machine Radio Show on New Jersey, 88 WWGAT. This is probably the best station in the world. That's right. Destination for real people, real life, and pop culture discussions. Join us for insightful conversations, special guests, and a lot of fun every week. Don't miss out on the excitement. Listen to the Mean Machine Radio Show. Rock me, baby. All right, so we're back now. Uh, welcome back to the Mean Machine Radio Show. We uh, we had some, you know what, I tried. I don't know if you guys can see, but I tried to wear something green. I don't have a whole lot of green stuff. These glasses are supposed to be green. I don't, just trying to be like, you know. Culturally, culturally correct on your St. Patty's Day, I guess you could say. Anyway, enough of me. Let's bring out our first guest. Like I said, these are uh, these are real truckers. These aren't people that we just like pulled on the side of the road. These are people that have, um, they're my heroes. These, uh, if for those who might or might not know, I know they do, and some other people have as well. Um, my family was in the logistics trucking industry for, well, geez, my dad was in it for more than 40 years, I would say. And uh, my brothers and I, we all grew up doing that kind of stuff. And and we understand uh, the supply chain and we understand what it takes to get from point A from door to door and over the road and less than truckload and all the different things of bobtailing here and deadheading there and all the different things that people have no idea on how this stuff gets to your table. You think you just it just gets airlifted into your supermarket or into a Home Depot or coming in you know, from overseas on a friggin rowboat. Now, people don't realize a lot of them on what it takes to be able to do that day in and day out to not only take care of their family, but our families as well, because that's what they're doing. Without them, we're screwed, and they need and command your respect and your admiration. They have mine, and I know by the time that we're done today, they're going to have yours as well, if you didn't already. So let's bring out Michael first. Uh, let's see. Where, where are you at, Mike? Let's see. We'll, hey. make, I'll make you bigger. Hey, there he is. What's up there, handsome? How are you? And I don't know if that's a good face for radio or not, but yeah. anyway, I'm pretty good. Yourself? Well, I'm not bad. I have sunglasses on, so forgive me. I really couldn't see you that well. <laughs> I um, I wanted to see. You heard uh, my little monologue there, and I meant every word of it, and uh, I appreciate you being on, so thank you. Um, why don't you t- start out? We're going to bring you, like I said, we're going to have you on first, and then we're going to bring Chris in in a second. He's waiting in the wings. Why don't you familiarize yourself with our listeners, our viewers, uh, for the people that might or might not know who you are, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, what you do. Go for it, man. Hey, well, first off, I just want to say I really appreciate you having us on and getting our word out there because we it's being stifled everywhere. Um, my name is Mike Johnson. I'm from Utah. I own my own company. Uh, I own one reefer, one truck, and that's what most of the industry is made of. Uh, 80, 86% of the industry is made up of one one to six carry one to six trucks fleets and that's you know we, we haul 95 percent of the freight so yeah that, that's pretty much a nutshell for for me i'm 48 years old and i've been in this industry for almost 30 years now all right well I, and just to be clear for those that might not know the trucking industry a reefer is not a spliff that's actually a, refriger- <laughs> a refrigerated truck <laughs> You know, I just want to throw that out there. Some people are like he's got a reefer. <laughs> I got some reefer. <laughs> I got a reefer too. <laughs> hey, we'll make money any way we have to. God damn it! But, um, yeah, there you go. You thought so? You you've been doing this for how how many years now? Straight through. I mean, this is what you do. This twenty nine. Twenty nine yeah. years. So just short of thirty years. That's incredible, yes, man. It's absolutely incredible. And I'm guessing that the landscape has changed since you first started, but some things don't. A little bit, yeah, a little bit. Just a little. Um, totally understandable, and uh, you know, just, just so- gotten worse year by year. Just, just gotten worse year by year, and now we're 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 pretty much at a breaking point, and that's that's where we come in. When you say breaking point, as far as, I mean, um, there's a lot of different things that we could go over, like I said, but. A breaking point because as a whole, not just you, not just Chris, the trucking industry as a whole, you're speaking inadvertently, you're speaking for an entire industry and everybody in it at this point in time. 
Uh, I would, is that correct? Well, but, I don't like, I don't, I don't really like to speak for everybody in it, but for the majority of the people, they're going out of business. They're just, we can't afford to operate no more. That's just a fact. And I'm guessing that you, I mean, even if you're not speaking for everybody, I'm guessing that it's affecting a lot of people, some more than others, maybe, maybe uh, individually, company wise, like you said, some of them are going down in flames and it's, uh, I don't know if there's any relief in sight when it comes to that, not to have it very dark and dingy about it, but obviously you're here because there's something that can and will be done about it. And uh, you're going to tell us all about that, which I'm, I'm happy to do because there's a lot of people out there in the trucking industry, family members of people that are, that are long haul drivers, you know, all sorts of stuff. And they're worried, but just like we all are. I mean, I understand because I've seen it from that side, but not everybody has. It's just, uh, you know, some people might say, oh, it's hyperbole. You know what I mean? They're exaggerating. It's not that bad. Or there's load boards and, and they're better. It's take it or leave it all. Oh, they make so much money. Uh, but people don't understand what it really takes to do this as a profession day in and day out, year in. And you're out. Would that be accurate for me to say that, something like that? I mean, is that... I I would say so. I mean, you know, it's uh, most people don't understand when, when they see that big truck that's in their way and, you know, they got to cut them off and get to that exit so that they can make their exit instead of just slowing down and getting behind them and not putting their life on the line. They, they don't understand any of that for sure. But uh, most people, you know, they take for granted how that the groceries got to the store. They don't realize how many trucks they've actually been on or, you know, how many you know miles somebody drove to to get that those groceries there or, you know i mean how many tears were actually shed to do it but you know it, it's uh yeah i mean <laughs> I don't know what, you, know, I, you know i get it i mean i don't know what people know what they don't know i think sometimes they just ignore it but as far as people driving like shit that i could definitely tell you happens here it ain't just you <laughs> This is Jersey. I mean, you can't spit and not hit someone else. I mean, we uh, we all have a, what's called Italian sound language, you know, sign language, you know, like. Yeah, you know, I know. Heard? Yeah. <laughs> we're, real, we're real pleasant around here. But um, a, in any what event, would they call it on Top Gun? Um, the bird. Uh, no, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, keeping friendly. It friendly. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't remember. Anyway. Not yeah, right. it, was, it was it was Top Gun. They They said that we were. Uh, exchanging friendly relations. That's what it was. Then he said, you, you know, yeah, the I'm bird. Sorry, he goes, the bird. I'm sorry. I hate it when it does that. Yeah. Oh, we'll do movie quotes. Uh, don't worry about that. Uh, that yeah. That's for another time. But I mean, it's serious stuff. And I know that we're going to be doing a series and we're going to have other people, though, just so that people understand at the time of this recording right now, and it's going to be playing on St. Patrick's Day, which is tomorrow. Um, they're not going to see anybody typing in the chat to refute anything that you might or might not say. Um, they're not going to be able to call in because obviously we're pre-recording next time you guys come on, it'll be with other guys. And I'm guaranteed not everybody's in a happy little nest. Like they're not all on the same page. They might want to, I mean, it'd be crazy for them not to want to make things better, make more money, do better by their family. I mean, what man doesn't, and, and by the way, I shouldn't even just say that because there's a lot of women truckers. I don't think people realize that as well. There's a lot of chicks that drive and I love them too. I got to tell you, because uh, they don't take any shit. They um, they're in a predominantly a, a man's field and they hold their own. A lot of them. Would you agree with that? Because I have seen oh, and yeah. that worked with them and they're just they don't. It doesn't matter. Gender doesn't matter to them. They're getting stuff done. Uh, we had uh, husband wife tandems and their kids all as owner operators that work for a trucking company that I ran, you know, um, whether we had company drivers or, or you know, or 1099, you know, uh, we have regular owner operators. People are trying to make a living. There's a lot of freight coming in. So whether you do intermodal, whether you're doing just regular dry van, or you're doing like straight jobs, whatever it is. I mean, from the from the big rigs and 18 months all the way down to low boys, all the way to, you know, door to door stuff. You know what I'm talking about. A lot of these people don't, but we're going to get that. Uh, I, I want to be clear that it affects us all, not just people in the New York, New Jersey area where my listeners are, but everywhere. You're coast to coast. You got the same stuff that's going on and problems out in California that you would have maybe in Kansas City or down in Texas, you know, or or over here. I mean, we're all Americans, and this is not a so much a trucker problem the way I see it. This is my opinion. It is a 
a fight for survival problem. This is your livelihoods. This will affect a lot of people because everybody shops. Everybody's got to eat, right? I mean... Well, I mean, unless they're not human, you you do have to eat. Uh, I don't know what you eat. I mean, during COVID, it seemed like everybody was eating toilet paper because you couldn't find it. But, you know, yeah. they were hiding in their basement and eating toilet paper from what I can understand because I, <laughs> yeah, was I don't know where it was going. I don't know. I think they were uh, having a Lysol for dessert back then. Was, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, and, oh, you know, and if you're really hungry for midnight snack, got a little sanitizer bubble over there. If you know. There you go. Uh-huh. Yep. Because they were, they were definitely what, hiding it. Oh, but it was, it was crazy. I mean, everybody needed their hooch, too. But it's not that. I was always told that food, transportation, and entertainment. I was told that back in the 80s. When I graduated high school, I was going into college. And they said, and this is back then, that if you get into one or all three of those, not only will you be recession-proof, but you will always have a viable job. Food, transportation, and entertainment. Well, guess what? I'm doing two out of three right now, you know, as far as the uh, the food and the uh, entertainment part. But I did do transportation, so I know that that will never change. The landscape changes. People get older. People are born. Different people in the workforce. Other people exiting. But those three things, if you think about it, everyone's got to eat. Everybody's got to get somewhere. And everybody wants to be entertained. That has never changed since I've been alive. And um, speaking of that... I wanted to let people know that, yes, I'm giving you a platform to get your word out there and everything. And, you know, people could follow you as, as people that are watching and not listening. I will uh, make mention of it. It says if you want to follow Michael on Twitter or X, it's at Michael 505 That's his handle on Twitter. I still call it Twitter because I can't be like, if someone says, do you have X? I go, no, why? You have some? <laughs> Or no, no, are you on X? I'll be like, that's none of your damn business. <laughs> I prefer painkillers. <laughs> anyway, he's been waiting patiently. Let's bring Chris in real quick here. But uh, I want to know, because normally I would let you tell everybody everything that's going on, then bring someone else in, because it's not really a panel. But being that Chris is your partner and is on the same page with you, I see no, he's been waiting patiently. So let's bring that now here. We'll tell you off of there. And we're going to put your site up there right now. And we're going to bring Chris in as well. There it is, though, by the way, past time for a change. In other words, what you're trying to say is about goddamn time that somebody does something and that someone is me. And on that, let's bring in this other gentleman right here. There he is. Let me see if we can make him larger. There he is. Live from Chris's. How's it going? What's up, Chris? How are you? Nice angle, buddy. Very good. (laughs) So, Chris, you heard everything yeah. about your good party, shot right? of the sleeper curtain. <laughs> For those that don't know that, there's actually uh, it's called a sleeper. Um, I got this one, guys. It's all right. I know some of the transportation part. If people are on the highway and you see the cab part of the truck and then you see, obviously, what you're hauling. And there's that kind of in between where instead of seeing the air brake, there's actually another part of the cab. That would be a wait for it. A sleeper. Yeah, people actually sleep in there at a way station. Well, not a way station, I should say on the side um, to not go over hours to be safe. If you've had too many hours on, whether you're in compliance or not, I believe it's 14 and 10 now, unless I'm mistaken. It was 12 and then it went to 14. Am I right? Uh, 14 hours on, 10 off. Well, it's 11 hours driving, 14 hours total and uh, 10 hours sleep. Right. So we used to use paper logs and everything, but um, now with all the e-logs and, you know, I used the geo tab and all the different things. But for those that didn't know, because like I said, we have people that are watching, but there's people that are just listening that are going to be on iHeartRadio. So that's what a sleeper is, folks. It's um, what Chris was trying to say. But Chris, like I did for Michael, let me give you the floor. Introduce yourself to uh, to everybody, you know, our listeners and, and, and my listeners and, and my audience, who you are, where you're from and what you do. It's all yours, man. Well, I'm Chris. I'm 44. Uh, I'm a small truck company, just like Michael. I'm a one truck company. Uh, run a reefer just like Michael. Mostly grocery, frozen foods, produce. I'm actually all in the produce load right now. Uh, loaded potatoes. 
Um, potatoes. Been in the uh, been... <laughs> Don't they like? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I live in Idaho too, so I'm based right. out of Idaho. So. All right. Go figure. Potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> well, welcome to Jersey, and we'll put that right on our pizza, so we all get along hand in hand. So, but I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just couldn't. St. Patty's Day and the potato thing. I couldn't help myself, Chris. I apologize. Please continue. No, you're good. Um, been driving for five years. Been in the, been around the industry my whole life. I've had a few uncles own their own trucks. Dad's friends owning their own trucks. Dad was in trucking industry until he met my mom. Then he even went back into it after I grew up became an adult he got back into it so i mean trucking's in my blood i hear that man. i've heard the stories so yeah, i became sucks. a trucker yeah it sucks becoming an adult too i just figured i'd weigh in on that part i you know i, I always hated that when people said would you grow up why i don't like grown-ups you know i just don't but um you obviously have it in your blood <laughs> like, uh, and, right. like I mentioned earlier and i've talked to you guys on the side um off of Twitter and everything because that's what my family, that's how I was able to get school clothes every year and how they fed my, my brothers and, and my mom and our dogs and our cats. And that all came from my father's blood, sweat and tears from his getting up at, at three 30 in the morning and, and hooking up to loads. And back in the day when you had to get a gen set, remember you had to get a gen set first to be able to do that or a triaxle for your overweight. Nope. This is before Twit cards were even required and all the intermodal. Oh, I'm going to wait six hours in line i gotta unplug and everything and i gotta wait there's no chassis or i got a high cube and that's not what the guy at the guard shack thought i was happy you know what i'm talking about i know about these type of things because i've dispatched before which by the way dispatchers uh shout out to them too because the really good ones man they can make or break your road right or wrong i mean a good dispatcher is like your best friend that you have that you can't see but he's with you you know there's an accident ahead this yep. is before there was Google Maps, and it was actually, I remember driving with my dad with paper maps, man. I'm not joking. Um, mm -hmm. And it just I just realized not too long ago that I they were upside down the way I was reading them. That's why we always ended up near Florida. I don't, now I know why. Um, <laughs> you guys have had time for a change. You're Michael's partner. And why don't you tell us about what that website is? I've been on it once. And I know you're you're doing some changing around, Mike. I remember hearing you in, in one of the Twitter spaces, which we'll talk about that in a little while. Um, but you're you're changing. You're going to have your own server, all sorts of stuff. If you could just just quickly go over what you're trying to accomplish. What you what you two guys. I mean, it's just you and Chris, right, for right now? Or do you have uh, other people under your belt there? Uh, we have other partners that are helping us with stuff. And, you know, my... Uh, web designer is actually, you know, a close relative of mine. I like to call him my brother. But um, anyway, uh, you know, he's uh, he's he's the backbone to our IT department. We've got some other people that are helping us with it. And it's really just grassroots. And what we're doing is we're trying to unite the trucking industry so that we take back the power of unity. And, you know, we're not just one carrier with one truck sitting there saying, please, can I? We're more like... A thousand carriers united saying this is what we're going to do and that's that's the gist of it you don't feel a brotherhood right now the way it used to be you don't feel united i mean no no it, it, it's it's a dog eat dog or lone wolf now it's not even funny i mean so it's everybody it's, it's every man for himself like a free-for-all and and that's not i mean that that can well, be not, a problematic not, Right. Yeah, not only that, but I mean, let's look at it. The large carriers have the pull because they have the supposed capacity. They don't have the, the capacity. The capacity is actually us. They're using us on the spot load board when they can't move a load. And that's what we need to stop doing is taking those loads and, and you know, start forcing them to use what capacity they actually have, not us and saying that they have more and more and they can just go get more more freight you know and and say that right, they can move it sharing. i mean there's no dedicated yeah. lanes anymore like you're just going to get whatever you never know what you're doing one day to the next and you're getting basically what you're telling me if i'm hearing this right is overflow work or pretty much 
pretty much. Yeah, but, needing somebody to take it all of a sudden, it becomes a hot load. Oh, we have to have this done yesterday. Well, you're supposed to pay for that, if I remember correctly. Doesn't that make the rate yeah. go up? That's like a hazmat where you would pay more. No, I mean, well, I mean, it, it's hard to explain in, in a 90 minute show, but yeah, I mean, we got. You, you got your tender rejection, which is the large carriers that can't cover the, cover the loads. You, you got your load board. You've got your independent uh, brokers that supposedly give you better rates, but everybody's going off of the same basic concept, and it's usually DAT, Sonar, or Truck Stop. Uh, yeah. They're 90-day average, 60-day average, whatever they have going on, and it's it's all skewed information. But what we're trying to do is take back our, our industry with numbers because you know if you have numbers you can say what are you going to do for my people what kind of insurance deal can you give my people what kind of tire deal can you give my people what kind of fuel deal can you give my people right and it's basically you know biggest problem we have is we as a motor carrier can go into any shipper any 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 person and say we want to haul your loads first question out of their mouth is well, what's your capacity? What can you do for us? How many loads can you haul for us? And for me, it's, well, I have one truck, one reefer. Okay, well, come back when you get 100, and we'll talk. Uh, nothing, you know. nothing underneath that. In other words, if you have 50 or something, you're a piece of crap. We don't want to even want to deal with you. And it were, am I wrong? By, so what do you mean by 100? Well, you have, to have an entire fleet. It, it, it really doesn't. It doesn't. It, it depends on what they actually need, but pretty much, you know, you, you can't go into Walmart without a thousand trucks. I promise you're not going to get a, an account with Walmart without a thousand trucks at least. And at that, you're going to get whatever scraps they throw you. And, you know, it, it's like the problem is, is, is I can't give a load to Chris, right? That's against the law. So we have what's called a broker in the middle that's taking all the cream out of it. And at this point in time, we're finding out they're taking 70 to, you know, anywhere from 40 to 80% of the, of the load. And we've, we're starting to find that out and they don't like what we're doing. And because we were sitting so long and we had so much time to do research, we found a bunch of stuff that we're bringing, bringing to the forefront and they don't like it. Not at all. The brokers don't like this. And this um, after it's already yeah. been flattened and they've already gotten the rate, it's coming over from the consignee or whoever the shipper is. And yep. they're already taking their, you know, they're paying, you know, the steamship line or whatever it is, um, just to give people a, a frame of reference. And then, Chris, I'm going to ask you something right after this, but they have that. Now, the broker who has to be licensed, I don't want to talk out of school because I've never been a licensed broker. Uh, I'm telling you right now, I know for a fact, and this was back then, I'm not going to mention names or companies or anything. You know, I have to uh, not do that to protect the hit. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. <laughs> but uh, I know for a fact that there was brokers that were doing stuff. They were not licensed. I guarantee it. And this is in this area, Port Elizabeth, New York ports down in Brooklyn, you know, American stevedores down there. Good men. And I'm not talking about the longshoremen and everything. I'm talking about people that were just it, look there's no other way to say it. it's just friggin' greed all right you'll be under my umbrella don't worry no one's gonna check that we'll put in my id you know the shit i'm talking about uh, like i said i'm not trying to bury mm -hmm. them but i remember hearing you say at some point in one of your spaces which are very good when i can make it i try to go in there and along with some other ones too they're, they're good there you said something about capping them at eight percent if you just said the metrics are something up to between 40 and 80%, what friggin' broker in America is going to be happy with what you're doing if you want to bang them out at 8%? I mean, he's got to be an absolute idiot if he would be, oh, yeah, that's that's totally cool. Same amount of freight coming in, uh, whether it's off of data or I'm going on SIP and then uh, bring it back. Yeah, you know what? I don't want 40%. The hell with it. I'll just go with 8 and be happy about it. That's, there's no friggin' way. So I could see how that would make them uncomfortable. And there go the silencing part if it comes out. Am I kind of on the right track there? or uh, Kind of, but th there's a lot more to it. But like I said, you got a 90-minute program, and uh, <laughs> oh, there, yeah. there's a whole lot more that goes into it. But this yeah, we're just... Day, this is only day one on that. Chris, what do you think about what we were just saying? What is the... Uh, is that the biggest issue that you're running into as far as the brokers being greedy, as far as people just throwing whatever. Oh, yeah. That, that's the same thing that Michael's going through, right? I mean, go ahead. Yep. Yeah, there's way too many hands in the, the pot. 
there so we've even caught it to where there some of these loads are having four or five different brokers into it four how's or five different how, brokerages how, how is that because even they possible? just handed that they hand it down they sell it off to the next brokerage and the next brokerage sells it down to the next one don't don't forget they take their cut before they sell it down yeah so what yeah. what first brokerage will take 20 percent and then the next brokerage will take 10 percent and the next oh, brokerage will take 10 percent i thought that was on the mm. back end like when this gets paid because mm -hmm. a lot of commercial accounts take up to 90 days to get paid and stuff i remember that when i was no so they're chopping it down so they're whittling this shit down to now who gets screwed hello the guy that's actually doing it mr mr doing Andy. all the work getting well, the product on the, there, on the working yeah yeah I on the know. load boards so i can pull it up right now on the load boards they actually are saying you know that uh uh they're they're offering rates that are less than what it costs us to operate like i mean you you can't afford it it's like saying okay well a carpenter is going to go and buy you know a thousand dollars worth of worth of supplies and the uh homeowner is only going to pay them five hundred dollars for their work and their supplies it, it doesn't work i mean oh, you're taking a five hundred dollar loss i mean i remember people that would walk over a fifty dollar fuel surcharge now you're talking about a, a different completely different level a different realm so everything's being whittled down and it still has yep. to get the credit guy. And basically, you're running to break even under cost. Case, under I mean, cost. We're, we, I lost one hundred and twenty-two thousand dollars in twenty-two. Just by under having cost. to take whatever you could take after they've already taken all their because they don't care. It doesn't matter if it gets to that door or not. They already got paid, right? I mean, yeah. Just just huh. by trying to stay in business and trying to, I, I used up all the credit and everything else. You know that that was out there. I mean, here's one Salt Lake to Dallas, two thousand dollars, a dollar forty three a mile. That's a two twenty five a mile load. Okay, so that's how, right on the board. So right it's now, two twenty five, but it's at a buck forty three. And to be able to break even, you have to be at least, I would assume, over two twenty five. Oh, okay. two twenty five. Just to break yep. even, you're not even talking about making a big time nope. profit. You're talking about just being able to justify even grabbing the damn thing to keep yep. busy and then praying you get something decent whether it's back all whether it's just for your return trip if you're dropping and hooking whatever it is there's no guarantee there either you might just do something just to not have to bobtail i would assume right Look, the price yep. of diesel is out of, uh please <laughs> it's, it's nuts what is yep. what is diesel now what is it six seven what is it um it ain't that high it's like 420 i mean i can look it up real quick if you would like me to but it's like 420 around here and then like five and a quarter six down in california so i mean yeah, i think it's higher here in new york but um i could be wrong i i would assume that that's something that hopefully you get some relief on because every bit hurt. i mean it's expensive to have to run a reefer but you got to stay I mean, the insurance doesn't stop and say, oh, you had a bad month? Oh, no problem. We'll give you a break in your no. insurance. Yeah, that'd be nice, right? And, and Chris's <laughs> trailer payment doesn't stop either. Yeah, you got insurance, which is up. People don't even realize on how much you guys got to pay high. You have to have, obviously, full coverage. But it's it's crazy. Well, it's the different, I, I mean, right? think it's Jersey that just actually raised it. I'm not sure if it's Jersey or not, but we were at $750,000 yeah, liability. Jersey. And now it's 1.5 million in New Jersey. It did go up. My regular car insurance doubled. I'm talking yep. about just regular cars. I have two vehicles, and they it literally doubled. And yep. uh, it, it, it's something's got to break. So if you're not making as much, but everything is going up, that's not just inflation. That's like that's like danger. Well, Robinson, you know that's. Let's see. We we can't even go through Jersey if we don't have 1.5 million in liability. Like yeah. it doesn't matter that. We're not stopping. We can't even go through it. So all those states that are, are annihilated by Jersey's new law. I don't know. I'm not. I mean, yeah, the governor here sucks, but I don't think it's even all his fault. It's just it's always been expensive over here. But it's yeah. these laws. I don't even know who the head of transportation is anymore. You know, going on out, out of D.C. there. But uh, I don't think I mean, that's the whole reason that we're doing this. When I say we, meaning you guys are doing what you're doing and I'm trying to make it so that other people are aware of it because 
Not a whole lot of people talk about this around here that I'm aware of. And I know yeah. a lot of people in the business, but they need to because inadvertently it is affecting not just Chris, not just you, all of us, the prices of stuff. Oh, there's only 10 things on the shelf. There's usually 30. Uh, this is bullshit. What do you mean supply chain? What do you mean that there's a problem? People don't realize um, what's really going on. They're lucky to even have gotten that. So before you're, you're ready to jump all over uh, a certain story, oh, it is a production problem. It's not the it's not that they can't produce it; is they can't get it there, and um, yeah. people. I I just think that people are blind. It's 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 you know plausible deniability. You know, blissful ignorance. Call it what you want. Um, I have the thing up there. I've been running that uh, for for those that are watching. Uh, you could actually see uh, Chris's uh, uh, Twitter or X on there at, at Chris Benick zero nine six for those that are listening and not watching. So. There you go. So if you want to follow Chris on X, it's Chris Benick 096. And for Mike, it is, we'll put yours back up there right now. Like I said, because there's some people that are not watching that can only listen at this point. And there's Michael's right there on Twitter, X, whatever, at Michael 505-9113. And you guys do spaces and, and stuff like that, too, which uh, we're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, we'll, we'll talk about that as well. And then we'll dive in a little bit deeper on, uh, on what you guys were talking about as far as the industry itself. And what exactly, how are you going to unite? Like, what's the battle plan? Whatever you can or cannot share with us, we understand. But uh, you're going to have to get people on board. And I know, just like anything else, with hearts and minds, it's not a, it's not always a, an easy thing to do. I would, I would assume that you guys already know that, though. You're pretty smart guys. And you, uh, you're not... You're not guilty of anything but trying to make things better for everyone, not just you guys. And that was kind of the vibe that I got. And that's what attracted me to speaking to you guys first. It wasn't all me, 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 I, I, I. It was us. You know, so yeah. I, I, I picked up on that. You, Chris, both completely different personalities, different places. But the things that bind you as as brotherhood, which is the way it used to be, where it meant something, union or not, it was a brotherhood logistics and yep. we're not even talking about no we're not even talking about the fmcsa and all the crap that you've been through with that and the law changes we're talking about just everyday life trying to put food on the table it doesn't get much simpler than that i mean this is as as basic as it gets it's called survival it's called the future you can't do anything about what happened before but you can make it you have control over what it will be going forward and uh that brings a lot of people hope if nothing else you can get off of this show uh, however many that we do with the truckers when you guys come back and everything to be able to leave better, people in a better place mentally and maybe just feeling better about themselves and about America in general because this is an American problem. I don't care what side of the aisle people are on. This is everybody. It, it, it's, it entails a lot of thought behind it and trial and error, but you have the right ideas about stuff and I want people when we come back to, to hear what you have to have uh, what you have to say because that's uh, it's good stuff. It's not all doom and gloom. And there's there is a way out, and you you and Chris have an idea, and that's why you're uh, you're getting together, and, and we're going to talk about that when we get back. So hang in there, gentlemen. We shall be back. I'm going to pop out uh, Michael and Chris for right now. You're listening to the Mean Machine Radio Show on New Jersey 88.6 WGAT. When we get back, we're going to be speaking to Michael and Chris and uniting the truckers. That's what this is all about. So don't go anywhere. And thank you for listening and thank you for watching. Got some good stuff coming up, so don't go anywhere. Uh, hi, baby. <laughs> okay, let's go. Tune in to the Mean Machine Radio Show with Gregory Joseph on New Jersey. 88.6 WGAT. Your ultimate destination for real people, real life, and pop culture discussions. Join us for insightful conversations, special guests, and a lot of fun every week. Don't miss out on the excitement. Listen to the Mean Machine Radio Show. Rock me, baby.
Tune into the Mean Machine Radio Show in New Jersey for real talk with no BS. We're real people telling it like it is. Get the raw truth on all things in society, life, and culture. Join us for brutally honest guests, banter, and no-nonsense advice. The Mean Machine Radio Show, where life gets real. Let's go! Like this. All right, so we are back. Welcome back. Anyway, so uh, we're talking with uh, Michael and Chris and... uh, this is part of the trucker series that we're doing here on the Me Machine Radio Show. For those that are watching on YouTube, we appreciate you. And those that are listening in on Spotify, uh, listening on iHeartRadio, um, we, we're so happy that you're here because this is important stuff that needs to be said. And uh, we're going to get back to them right now. And uh, for those that are coming in and sliding in, it uh, looks like a few people here on uh, New Jersey 88.6 WGAT, live from the great state of New Jersey. So we have uh, these gentlemen here, if you missed it at the beginning. Uh, one is Michael, and he's out in Utah, and that's him right there. And you have Mr. Idaho himself. There's Chris. And so we're back. We'll get Paulie Walnuts off the screen there for a minute. How you doing? And uh, that, that's uh, just how we say hi in, in Jersey style. You have to speak Jersey here, you know. You might not be able to enter the state without paying uh, out through the ass, but uh, at least you can see what's going on here. Um, anyway, so. We had already been speaking about, uh, and, I'll, and I'll run the uh, caption again here, because uh, for those that can watch, and I will say it for those that uh, are just listening in, it's past time. Well, let's put it up here. We'll put it up here first. So, all right, there it is. Past time for a change, which is basically a great name for a website. Why don't you mention, since you guys are partners in this how long ago did you start this? Because obviously these problems didn't crop up overnight. This is something that you've been dealing with probably for the last few years. It's been getting progressively worse. You said you lost uh, six figures, right, Mike? You said you lost six figures in 2022, did you say? Was that yep. when that was? Okay. Chris, how about yourself? Same kind of 
same kind of deal going on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 2022, I ended up losing close to 80,000. Actually, a little bit more because I, my truck was actually down in the shop for like six of those months in 2022. So combined between you and him, just short of a quarter of a million dollars, about 200 yep. to 225. Wow. And there's no relief in sight. So I'm guessing you had to take matters in your own hands. I remember hearing on one of these spaces uh, that I believe you were running there, Mike, and uh, Chris was weighing in and a few others, too. And they seem to be on the same page as well, where going to the government or going to the FMCSA or write your congressman, like they used to say back in the day, that's not cutting it, is it? you got to take this no. into your own hands. That's no. Why don't no. you tell, but, tell but, people <laughs> what your idea is? Because uh, we can't fit everything in on this first episode. But what is the basic gist? Like if I went to your website and I said, all right, I want to check out what Michael and Chris are putting together. Is it just about changing hearts and minds? Or is it about opening people's eyes to what's really going on? Because nobody's going to open their wallets until they open their eyes and they're made aware of what it is. So why don't you... Well, right now we're, we're in the first stages and what we're trying to get is um, capacity and to get capacity, we're asking that people just sign up what they own and we're trying to unite the trucking industry as a whole so that we are considered, we wouldn't be a carrier because we wouldn't be under one flag, but we would be considered the largest carrier in, probably in the world actually. But I'm just going to say in the nation. Um, and by doing that, we would have the ability to go into any shipper and be able to pick up as many loads as we wanted to. Because we would be using each other as, like I said, I can't pass a load to Chris. So we had to start a necessary evil. It's called a, called a brokerage. And we all hate to hear that word. But here's the neat thing about it. It's 100% transparent. And basically what I mean by 100% transparent is uh, there's what's called a tender. And that is the agreement from the customer to the broker stating how much they're going to get paid. That will be released to the driver day of signing the confirmation. On the confirmation will be broke down how much was uh, paid to the brokerage, how much was paid to the broker that was with the brokerage, and how much was paid to the driver. On top of that, on the bill of laden, I want them to write exactly what they were paid so that that is all confirmed 100% across the board. And we're combating, combating some other problems that are going on in the industry, like this uh, double brokering. Well, that ain't going to happen because we, we figured out a way that we can make it so that we know who's picking up the load when they're picking up the load. And if it ain't the right person, well, they're no longer going to be picking up our loads and we're just going to go to the FMCSA site, find out exactly who's got that truck, get a hold of them and say, this is your lucky day. You've been double brokered, but here's what the load's actually paying if you want it. If you don't, then, you know, we'll find somebody else. But this load was double brokered and uh, they're off of it. So Boy, does that sound like eerily uh, similar to what you're talking about as far as the reversal of fortune, how you have to take it or leave it when they're putting this on the board at the, at the last moment and it's not paying squat and you're basically yep. running to run, not running to make money. Well, I mean, what you, you to, but you can't, right? I mean, not under what these you do nowadays is you go to the board and it says like, like I showed you that hundred dollar 43, you go to the board and you say, look, I can't take that. How about you do this? And they go, well, we can't do that. We'll do this. There, there's no more of that. It's just like car car sales. You don't go to the, the blue book anymore because they already know that you're going to go to the blue book. So what the price is on the on the window, that's pretty much a blue book. You're not going to get it much lower than that. That's They're not trying to get any more money out of it. That's, They've that's been cornered. They know that they, they can, that you can fact check this stuff. I mean, right. nowadays, it's easy. You so, have to look up and You can actually do that. I don't know if people know that, but. It's mm -hmm. common knowledge. In other words, it's public knowledge if you want to look up someone's DOT or their SCAT code to make sure that that's matching up, you know, the, the SCAT codes on stuff or uh, their MC number, their motor carrier number for people that don't know what that is. I mean, there's yeah. different ways um, that you could find this stuff out. And if there's been accidents, and I mean, this is all public knowledge. You could go on the different sites. The FMCSA is a wealth of knowledge um, for those that might or might not know that. And, uh, 
it's free to, to go on there. It's, it's like I said, it's, I, I think you have to put in your credentials that I think the, not just anybody can do that. I think only the insurance no, anybody can do it. Oh, they can? Anybody can do it. Yep. Anybody uh, can go on nope. the safe stats and punch in uh, our, our DOT number, our MC number or our name. And they have all our information. How many times we've been shut down? How many times we've had an inspection? Um, how many times we went to the bathroom? I mean, you know, it's just. No, I'm sure that's very important. Yeah, uh, it's ridiculous. Yeah, no, we, we don't pee. We do that on a, you do that on your own time. I know, right? But yeah, they don't know. You, <laughs> you have a schedule to make. Oh, you're going to get that and you have to have the box back uh, because it's got to go and make this one ship. You got to be in there before the pier closes. This is just for stuff. That I'm talking about like just pier stuff, like the intermodal part of it or uh, mm-hmm. the rail part of it. Uh, not even your regular. See, that's why I always thought the dedicated lanes where you started, you went to sleep Sunday night knowing that come Monday, you're going to have a certain amount of loads that you're going to be able to grab. You already know ahead of time who the customer is for the most part. And how much it's going to pay it doesn't fluctuate, and you're going to the same places. It's pretty much ideal for somebody that wants to make sure that they're going to make money Monday through Friday, and uh, it's always going to be there. Those are quote unquote because not everybody knows transportation. That's what dedicated lanes are. I would think that that's really of paramount importance because not yeah, knowing going to go. Oh, geez, I wonder if there's going to be something on the board today. Am I going to have to? do three loads for the same price as I would do one load back in the day just to be able to break even. That That's hard for me to get up the next day and, and get ready and, and go fuel up and do this and that. Knowing that ahead of time, that kind of puts a damper on things, I would think, you know? I mean, yep. not knowing. The unknown, it's scary. You got to feed your family. You got stuff to do. And they, their attitude is, well, you know, we don't need you. You need us. So we're going to give this to somebody who's going to take this. And uh, it's like playing the prices right. At that, these are people's lives and livelihoods that that they're. I don't know if they. I I don't know about that. I I think that's kind of a misconception myself because, well, you know, there. When I call up, I don't take the load for what it is. But I can tell you that they don't tell you how much I took the load for. That doesn't go into the figures. They don't. They don't actually change the figures just because I said I'm not taking it for two twenty five a mile. I'll do it for three and a quarter or 350 right and they have to move the load they're not going to put that up that it went for 350 it went for 225 right right and i think that's that's all skewed yeah. all those numbers are skewed but one thing i did want to say to finish out real quick um it, the biggest thing that that people are going to enjoy on on what we're doing is not only we're we being transparent but we're giving the money back to the drivers we're giving them 90 percent and we we've, we've worked around those figures and it's going to be a tight pull but we are going to work on the 90 percent to the drivers and two percent to the brokerage and eight percent to the broker and if there are other factors that go into it then it'll vary between what the broker makes and what the uh uh carrier makes if it's their load because we're also doing something where we're teaching the drivers they can go get their own loads and push all of the extra uh, down to the capacity of the uh, uh, brokerage and make a small percentage as a finder's fee. So they make a residual income. If they go in and score a thousand loads, they take their load and then they make a residual fee on every load that comes in thereafter. So we're really just trying to bring all the money back into the driver's pocket. That's what we're trying to do. And you're going to get a lot of blowback. I would think a lot of pushback oh. on that because I mean, like I mentioned, oh, yeah. broker, but can you imagine because now all of a sudden it's going to start affecting them over on high, you know, the, the high and mighty that everybody like, you know, we're going to give it to whatever. It's kind of like throwing a scrap for a dog and whoever grabs it, grabs it. And uh, yeah, yeah. dealing with people's lives. I don't like that. I never did. Um, and I no, see that. that that's the thing is is they done just like Hawaii as well. They they segregated the people in different cultures and and this person will work cheaper and blah blah blah. And we've always had the problem of not being able to communicate with them. Well, past time for a change is changing that as well. Uh, we've got many people in many different languages that are communicating with all the languages, so we can get on the same page. And we ain't going to be taking any loads for you know, cheap rates. We're just not going to do it. We're going to teach people that there's the, the, the loads are, you know, they pay more than what they say they do. And we've proven that. I mean, 
a twelve thousand dollar load it, we found on a lane that they were paying for for uh two thousand to three thousand dollars a nine thousand uh, dollar lane they were paying the driver thirty five hundred out of their own mouth uh you know a one point five million dollar uh broker on sixty five loads that's what he said he made if you break that down that's thirty two thousand dollars per load and with that said you know, you're, you're needing to pay the driver. If you're saying that you're only taking a 14% cut, you need to pay the driver about $150,000. And I'd like to know any oversized driver out there that can tell me they made $150,000 on an oversized load, not on a super oversized. We're not going to talk about 300 wheels on the ground because that's a seven year project trying to set up the logistics of it. Oh yeah. And then some, yeah, well, a lot yeah. of people don't even know what that is, but just or in layman's terms, you know, you could explain it, but it's, you're basically, <laughs> you have, it, it is just what it says it is. It is a overcapacity or overweight load that you need permits for. Yeah, you got to pay for that too. Nothing is free in this life, you know, and it, there's yeah. a lot behind the scenes that I, I mean, I don't know it like you guys did. I've been out of it for a while, but this is a, a daily grind that seems, I mean, the job is tough enough. And well, the, the broker will try to say, well, I deserve more because I got to get permits. Well, you know who actually has to get the permits? It's the carrier. It has to be in the carrier's name, not the broker's. So the broker's not paying for permits. He might how, reimburse how, for the permits, how, how but that's usually, it? yeah, that's usually in the load. So again, like I said, I'd like to know where this particular guy paid any one driver over $100,000 for a load. Because if he didn't, well... Then, then he took way more than his percentage. And I don't understand why the brokers have gotten away with it for as long as they, they have. Uh, but if you could explain. That's a, <laughs> that, that's a different time. You don't want to really get into that. That gets deep. But uh, pretty much it's because there's no regulation on the brokers. In, in 1980, uh, we had what was called the deregulation of the trucking industry. It wasn't really a deregulation of the trucking industry. It was a deregulation of the brokerage. They have no they, ha they have no regulation. They haven't paid not one fine in 44 years. And not that's just a fine. fact. Nowhere not one fine. Other, th other than household goods. Household goods is still considered to be con uh, controlled by the FMCSA, which is really, really weird because when they wrote the deregulation and the uh, stuff of that nature, they, they uh, left all that, uh, all that in there. They just made it so that the freight uh, broker had no regulation and no no supervising uh, division. Authority. Yeah, right. Division. Well, no, no, no. The, the ICC was actually the original division that was uh, monitoring the MCs, right? And the mm -hmm. uh, ICC... On. Monitoring is not the same thing as regulating, just so that we're clear. It, yeah. They, they were. They were the monitors and the regulators of the MC. But remember, the ICC went out in 96. So in 96, the brokers actually had no regulation whatsoever. They when came up with... The, what does that mean, went out? They just went out of business? No, they were... The, the ICC was actually dismantled and dis, dis, disassembled in the government. That was the regulating body. Now, when the ICC went out... There was nobody regulating the trucking industry. That is really when the whole um, brokers, or not brokers, but dispatchers going crazy and telling the, the, the drivers they can either get it done or they have somebody, you know, 12 people waiting to take their job. And you had all these drivers that were supposedly out of control, but they really were just trying to keep their jobs. Right. And well, so dismantle one, the government is aware of this for whatever reason. I guess they didn't think that that was important. And then let's replace it with absolutely nothing. And that was in what year was that? 96. 96. Yep. So you're and, talking and, about Jesus Christ. That's over 25 something years, a little bit more, mm -hmm. but nothing. Just absolutely yeah, that's when FM FMCSA was formed because supposedly it was the drivers out of control. Right. But it wasn't the drivers. It was the wow. dispatchers and the companies that were pushing the drivers. You'll either get it done or we'll find somebody that can take your job. Right. So they they right. did what they had to do, which is where all the drugs came in and everything else. And yeah. everybody was running wild, going from New York to California overnight, you know, and just 
running 120 miles an hour down the road and it was supposedly all the driver's fault but i mean what do you do when you're told you don't have a job if you don't do it you just yeah. do it right and the drivers were falling asleep and so, doing that stuff, yeah. and that's how all these these rules and regulations came about because it was dangerous not everybody but there yep. was a lot of accidents i remember I was in the business then, and it was. Uh, I remember reading about it and seeing it, and I'm like, Jesus, you know, it's. And that's when the FMCSA came in, remember? And then they started all the scales and everything else, and and your yeah. log books and all the this stuff that that went into effect at that point in time, and they said, okay, well, we're 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 uh, we're now in control with the FMCSA, the Federal Motor Safety Regulations Administration. The only problem was is they still hand out MCs today. So who regulates the governing body of the MC class B, which is a brokerage? Nobody. Absolutely nobody. So that. either so either they need to get a body that regulates them or they need to regulate the MCs that they actually handed out. And the FMC will tell you all day long that they don't have any way to regulate the brokers. So what I've done is I've I'm going to become a broker and I'm giving it all back to the truck drivers and basically starving the brokerage out because all I need is a load. And again, since day one, I've been telling these guys, you need the trucks. We don't need the brokers. Brokers aren't needed. Brokers are a, a, an unnecessary evil, if you ask me, because they've taken all the cream out of the pie. All right. So let, let's for once again. So if you don't need brokers and a lot of them have contracts and some don't with let's say the steamship lines or whatever so if you are a guy that said you know what all right i'm going to work for mike and chris and you're going to start the name of a company and you're going to get your business licensing and you're going to i'm guessing you're going to need your own dot and all that let's say you do all that and um i come to you and i'm a driver and i say you know here's my credentials and i have a twit card and i've been doing it for this long and you know i have my own insurance and i have my air brake inspection and my long form and short form, you know, my safety stuff and my health, I, I, everything's in order. All my paperwork is in order. And my, here's my 1099, all that. And I wanted to work for you because it sounds very enticing that oh, I'm going to get 90% back. You know, this is all about the drivers now and not about the brokers. How is that going to fly in your opinion? Because I have the website up now and it's still kind of uh, uh, looks like it's a work in progress. Uh, but I, I like Oh, yeah, we just... Program. We just switched over to a different uh, host carrier because if, if you look right there, there should be a flag that goes to uh, somewhere in there. Okay, it's that little green dot. If you click on that little green dot that's above the counter. No, up, 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 up. Okay, right there. That's supposed to be a flag. That's actually the Turkish website. If you click on that. Yeah, I did before it came up. I saw what, what's that all about? What's with the Turkish uh, website? Well, can you talk Turkish? Because I can't. So we're can we're Turkey, uh, but not Turkish. No. Yeah. yeah. So we're we're communicating with other languages by finding people that speak English and Turkish. And this guy that actually is going to handle that side, which will have a link to a Facebook room, and you know they'll be able to go there and they'll be able to to speak amongst each other, and we'll be giving them the information so that they can pass it down, so that we can stop this this whole nonsense of dollar fifty a mile because they think that other people are taking it for that they've been told that that's that's the rate okay but why out of all the different languages why turkish what, because what? that was that was the first guy that i ran into we've actually got eight all languages right. we're working on but we just barely switched over to a new host provider because okay. going with godaddy it would have cost us seventy two thousand dollars a month to to create this website because they go off of each website. Okay. So. And, and then it's going to be, uh, yeah, because I would think, obviously, especially over here, Spanish would be important. Uh, yep. Russian would be important. And uh, yep. maybe, uh, I don't know about and, and our Spanish division, she's she's actually, uh, uh, she, she's, a, she's a go-getter. She's uh, going to be in charge of an, another little project. And uh, the carriers out there, they know what's, what's called the carrier 411 it's where the brokers go if we if we don't want to take a load and they don't like our attitude they can ruin our business by putting us on carrier 411 and then it goes you know to every carrier that, that subscribes or every broker that subscribes to it and uh basically um they can put our name out there that we did something wrong even if we didn't 
and it basically ruins our business and you know we we uh, we decided we're going to combat that so we came up with what's called roadkill and that's essentially anybody that's got nine dollars and 95 cents can put up a report we view it we background it we make sure it's true because once it goes on roadkill that's it it's never coming down the best you can get is it was it was uh uh the, the situation was was handled and you know there was a resolve to it but it never comes down as happening because you know like they put us out there on on uh, carrier 411 and ruin our business because you know when you say they, we, are we talking about exactly brokers brokers oh so in other words some it, of this, this is like, this is just for brokers so and they can make something up and if mm -hmm. nothing else not stop you 100 percent, but tarnish your name or no 100 percent, 100 percent. because anybody any broker any broker out there just punches our mc in and says sorry we can't use you you're on broker 411 or you're on carrier 411 so literally literally it, one it, incident can kill us that makes zero less than zero sense to me so i could just get drunk one night call up come up with a fake allegation and stop your business in in its tracks if you were a broker and see here's the thing they get to say whatever they want about us you know what you get as, as a rebuttal a 500 character rebuttal and if they don't think it's bad enough that it's going to affect their business they don't take it down and carrier 411 will not take it down only the business that puts it up so let's put it this way if a broker comes in they put you on carrier 411 and go out of business it can never be removed doesn't matter so it's there forever and when yep. you say they who is funding carrier 411 it's a private organization that actually is not even a legal organization, but the TIA just fixed that, the Transportation Intermediate Association. They represent the brokers in Congress. They are worth $182 million and they line Congress's pocket, but they just fixed that because they just passed a bill where they're going to have a government funded carrier 411. So I don't know how that's going to work out, but now the government is willing to put our names out there as uh you know I, I don't know what proof you're gonna have to have but carrier 411 you don't even have to have proof you just have to make a report that that's it crazy that you can put all this work in aren't, aren't you doesn't that mm -hmm. worry you and, and i guess chris you could chime in here as well does that bother you that you're going to put all this time and effort and obviously it's going to cost you money and you're trying to do that while simultaneously trying to take care of your family and do what you're doing, whatever side work there is, grabbing whatever load you can just to fill up the week. Totally, I get that. Aren't you afraid that you're going to make the site exactly how you know how you want it and have the guys with different languages so you knock that barrier down, which is a great idea, by the way, because some people don't understand English, but they're damn good drivers, and I've run into that before. So you're going to go through all that and create it and market it and and get people in trying to not all about you it's about sharing the wealth like a corn mm -hmm. and then somebody could come yep. by and just throw a monkey wrench in the whole damn thing that's got to be daunting that that could happen that easily and then your 500 character response if it's not that your ass is on fire or something like that or it's going to affect somebody's pocket i should say that's a really gets people's attention right it's are you afraid that that's going to stop you do you have any protocols or anything in place to prevent that from happening because you know someone's gonna it's gonna be brokers are gonna unite against this they're not gonna want to take a big hit do you have any thoughts on that or no they really don't have a choice because what we're doing is we're going in and we're, we're opening the eyes of all the shippers that they have the right to know how much we're being paid they have the right to every bit of the information the way that the uh uh 49 cfr 371.3 is actually what it is it's the regulation it states that all parties involved have access to all the paperwork, all of the, it's for, all for the whole load. Right. It's where, transparency. Or not everybody saw everything. Now you're just basically bullet pointing or line eyeing this person got this, this person, yep. here's the times, here's the dates, here's the phone no, number. On top of that, they right. also will be, I mean, the information will be there. I mean, I'm going to put a, uh, a QR code on there that goes directly to the website because you know people are lazy all they want to do is scan something with their phone 
it'll go directly to the website for the federal government that states exactly what I'm saying, or at least a picture of it if I can't idea. link it Welcome that way. To 2024, Michael, a QR yeah, code. No, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm currently, I'm actually in the background right here. I had to stop for the for the show, but I'm currently working on a auto dialer so that I just put all the numbers and uh. when we're dialing these numbers, we just sit there and when it hangs up, the next one calls and we just sit here. How and that call? allows that allows Chris and me to do it while we drive. Yeah, you could free, it frees up time. And, and by the way, just on the heels of that, I appreciate you taking the time uh, today. We still have some time left, but I uh, have to take another break. But it's um, okay. it's it's incumbent upon me to let people know that you're going to have the naysayers just like any other business. Everything is cutthroat. Only the strong survival. This the fact that you're not doing really well, or you and Chris are not saying just just to use two, you two guys because you're here it's not that you're not doing well it maybe you weren't doing as well as you were before not a lot of people are in a lot of different industries but the fact that you're not being selfish about it and that you're trying to do something for everyone where everybody kind of shares the wealth i think i made mention of this earlier that says and speaks volumes about you and about chris that you're not trying to just get back your investment or your time which is something that you can never get back you can get back your money can never get back your time right so right. that it it does it speaks volumes about what type of character that you both have and i'm i'm impressed by that um and i'm very glad that you're here because yeah it's a lot of information and we're going to have to go over it again and you're going to have people that are going to come on and, and they're going to try to drag you down and i know you're up for it i'm sure chris is too <laughs> i certainly am because uh you don't need me to to fight for you I'm just giving you a, a space to be able to do it that's a little outside of your comfort zone. But I think if you can knock down, just like anything else, everybody's objections, this, that, what about this? What if that? This is what happened. You knock those all out of the box. There's nothing left but okay. Because I'm guessing at some point you got to raise funds. At some point you're going to have to do loans. At some point you're going to have to vet all these guys. You need a whole bunch of trucks to be able to remain competitive. And they're going to try to, to to kick your ass right out of the gate. Nobody wants to share everything. Not everybody is as I, I'm not to say, use the word nice, but not everyone is as thoughtful. It's not just about Michael's trucking. It's not just about Chris's trucking. It's about trucking and everybody that's in it. No, it's it's people. actually bigger than that. Well, I mean, it, it's about the consumer. We're we're trying to actually because well, from what we've. Yeah, what we what we've found out, to be honest with you, is these shippers are paying way more than they're being told that they're paying, mm -hmm. and that's that's the reason that everybody's losing their job because they can't afford shipping. Well, that doesn't make any sense because if I'm not making any money, but the shipper says I can't afford the the uh, help, then who's in the middle taking that 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 cream out of the crop? So we're oh racing God. it to the bottom. We only oh want what we need. Is it the broker? Am I right? Am yeah. I in <laughs> well, you know, you know. It's not that I'm not to demonize them because there's some good ones out there. People that do the right thing. And, and, you know, you're towing the line with a lot of stuff. Not everybody is evil, but they've gotten a bad rap because what you're saying is true. And it's just like any majority else. of brokers are taking a big cut. Right. Well, I will I, say I, that. I, I'm going to say this. I haven't found any good ones. To be honest with you, I haven't found any good ones. If there are any good ones, go ahead, step up to the plate and show me proof. Because the one thing they don't want to do is prove what they're saying. I'll show them anything they want to see. I don't You're care. Be transparent but, about everything. You're saying, here you go, show, A, B, C, D, yeah. and everything that's involved. There's nothing left to chance or, oh, you didn't show us this. You're, you're essentially opening the books. Here yep. you go. Here it is. And I'm letting everybody that yeah. doesn't know, know that that's their right. The shipper and the, like the shipper and the receiver have zero idea that they have any rights to, to know how much I'm being paid to move their freight. They don't know that. They think that the only thing they have a contract with is the broker. But what they don't realize is the actual bill laden, the, the actual move is an agreement, a legal agreement between me and the customer. There's no broker in the middle that has any kind of uh, responsibility to the load. Once I sign on that dotted line, that's my load until it's delivered. And it's between me and the shipper when payment comes. Mm -hmm. And if the broker doesn't pay me, 
guess what? I can go after the shipper. I can go after their customer. And he, and they're completely, the broker is able to sidestep that and say, well, I made my money. Oh, I'm not getting involved with that. That's between you guys. Well, that's so yeah. cowardly in my opinion. Well, look, look at money, look at Surge Logistics. I mean, we got to go to break here, but look yeah. at Surge Logistics for a minute. They owe uh, $12 million, okay? And they were out of business for three weeks. They had Triton uh, Transportation come in, which is actually owned by them as well. Uh, they gave their broker bond to Triton Transportation for Triton Transportation to bail them out. And look, they're moving loads today. They have to pay in three days, but they don't have to pay the twelve million back. So, ever, <laughs> you know, it, yeah. it's like, Doesn't how does that work out? Fair, huh? Well, we'll talk about that when we get back. We still have a little bit of time. We're going to go into our uh, final break. You are listening to the Mean Machine Radio Show on New Jersey 88.6 WGAT. We are joined by Michael and Chris. Uh, these are the. This is the heart of America. A lot of it is. These are the truck drivers, the people that are part of the huge part of the supply chain. You could have the best supply, the best demand, all the checks and balances, but if you have a great product but you can't get it. Well, that kind of takes the wind out of a lot of people's sales. Oh, we have something that's great, and we're going to ship all this, and it's it's good, and it's wonderful, and it's something that your family needs. It's something that, that America needs, but we just can't get it because it's too expensive to move it around because of greed. Well, that sucks. I, I, just, I don't even have a, a more glorious word to use than that sucks. That's greed. That's people. That's cowardice. That's not thinking of your fellow man. At the end of the day, we're all human beings here, and we're all... You know, we want to do that. You should be able to do as well as you want to do based on the amount of hard work that you put in, not with some guy in an office somewhere decides to not take as much or rob you so bad, draw you in. You know what I mean? Which that does happen. I know that you're probably very hardened. You and Chris both are hardened to that effect. You're not stupid men. You know what I mean? And you understand that. But knowing about it and being able to stop it are two completely different things. And you're going to try to make that change for everybody. Everyone will be happy. Everyone shares in the wealth and, you know, your, your head hits the pillow at the end of the night, knowing that you did everything you could for not just your family, but a lot of people's families. Now I'm sure that that's something you could get behind. I'm sure that's something that everybody in the industry and beyond can get behind. And that's not just the truckers that that's just people getting the word out going, you know what? These guys have had it bad for so long, but we still get our stuff every weekend all the time to our stores to whatever we need when it's very easy for us to click a button and say, hey, where's my package and stuff. They don't realize what it takes to do it. It's not their fault. But well, not- even ordering online, it still comes on a truck to get into that area. Yeah, you have <laughs> trucks that are doing that. You have the stuff that's coming from overseas that has to get to these different depots. Yep. I mean, especially New York stuff. There's no room in New York. All the warehousing or most of it is here in New Jersey. Edison is a big one too. Um, that's mm-hmm. where they store it. So if I'm a shipper and I'm bringing stuff in and I'm closer, I have customers that are over there. I'm not going to have my stuff come in in, in Port of Los Angeles, which I've been to. I was checking that out years ago. I'm not going to have it come in there and then have to pay someone to, to haul this thing across the country. I'm going to have it come in on a different ship that's coming in on the East Coast and then bring it from the port to DC. To, to Patapsco, you know, like uh, Baltimore, mm-hmm. that area, or going down to Florida, you know what I mean, or whatever it is, or even up to Massachusetts. You're not going to bring that stuff across the country because now there's nothing left. You're whittling it down, and everybody still needs to get paid. There's still a demand for this stuff. People just, no, you're right, though, Chris. If people just don't know where they assume. You can't assume anything, I guess. Anyway, well, let's go to that break. Right. Uh, when we get back. Michael and Chris with some final thoughts, and this is just part of a series because there's too much to go over. We're trying to get to everything, and we've done a good job so far, but there's just so much because you can't just say, hey, this is our website. This is what we're doing. This is how you sign up. This is who you call. you got to go through the whole backstory over and over again to get and, and to tell people this stuff. So that's what is very time-consuming, but it's well worth it. It definitely is. All right, gentlemen, we'll be right back. You're listening to the Meme Machine Radio Show live on WGAT right here, 88.6 in the great state of New Jersey. We'll be back.
Okay, let's go. Tune in to the Mean Machine Radio Show with Gregory Joseph on New Jersey. 88.6 WGAT. Your ultimate destination for real people, real life, and pop culture discussions. Join us for insightful conversations, special guests, and a lot of fun every week. Don't miss out on the excitement. Listen to the Mean Machine Radio Show. Rock me, baby. Tune into the Mean Machine Radio Show in New Jersey for real talk with no BS. We're real people telling it like it is. Get the raw truth on all things in society, life, and culture. Join us for brutally honest guests, banter, and no-nonsense advice. The Mean Machine Radio Show, where life gets real. Let's go! Like this. All right, welcome back. This is the Mean Machine Radio Show. I am your host, Gregory Joseph, and we have Michael and we have Chris here today. Uh, we're going to start wrapping things up with some uh, final thoughts, and we're going to bring back both of these gentlemen right now. And bottom line is that if you don't know the business or whether you do, whether you don't, it's important that you understand that they do understand it. There is no doubt and that this affects everybody. So as we wrap up, I'm going to go to Chris first. Chris, why don't you make mention of uh, you guys do spaces and you talk about this, this kind of stuff all the time. Now, we're going to have you guys back yep. we're going to be live next time. And you're going to get some people that are going to try to rebut what you're saying. Uh, you're going to have to go over to broad strokes again. And you're going to have to field these questions. I know Michael is ready and prepared. I sure, I'm damn well sure that you are. And uh, I, I would just kind of sit there. I'm going to wear, I have a referee's outfit that I'm going to put on. I bought it especially for when you guys come back. Because, you know, I'm going to <laughs> And uh, no, but, but seriously, why don't you tell people when you do your spaces? Because not everybody has Twitter. You know, so sometimes they're not listening to anything and uh, they have no idea how to contact. I'm going to bring uh, I'm going to put it back up on the uh, on the screen again. First, we're going to put uh, we're going to put Chris's on there first. So let's do that there. So, Chris, when is the spaces that, that uh, you and Michael, because uh, I know you co-host and everything on when, when are tell everybody when it is and when they can catch it. So we do the X spaces every Tuesday and Thursday at two o'clock Eastern time. Uh, so that's what 11 o'clock Pacific time. I had to think for a minute, but, um, yeah, we do it every Tuesday, Thursdays. Minutes is unique, Chris. That's fine. That, that, that's fine. Yeah. Here's and it, it's for everybody. So even consumers, general public, whoever, whoever wants to come in, you got questions, we can answer them. Um, and if we can't answer them, we can find out someone that can. And it's we know a lot of different truckers. Well, yeah, I, I was going to just make mention real quick, not to cut you off, but there's people so they could feel comfortable enough just going in there and listening. They don't even have to participate, but to be yep. able to learn more. And they go for what? You, you guys run it for was it at least two hours? I don't know what the cutoff is for a space. <laughs> yeah, Honestly. usually about two, two and a half hours. We try to cut it off. Every Tuesday and I'm sorry, when did you say it was? It was every Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, two o'clock Eastern time. So till about four thirty, five o'clock, uh, for for those that want to listen on their phone or or do it like I do with a desktop. And it's not just people in the trucking industry. Anybody can weigh in or ask a question, and you're open to that. You're saying unless someone acts like a complete idiot, um, they can yep. and, and and listen to what. The banter that goes because I noticed that a lot of the truckers, the ones that I've been in, it's kind of like like Michael will talk, then you'll talk, and then uh, some people will weigh in, and you always have one guy that's like you know the malcontent where it doesn't matter if you gave him a pile of gold, they're, they're still not happy, you know. So you're going to get all mm -hmm. different types of people, but eventually you win them over. Is that what your is your goal to win them over and then do what you're doing, or your guys are going to do whatever it is that you feel is right, and then whoever wants to, I wouldn't say comply but that wants to make their lives enrich their lives. And uh, we're going to do it no matter what. Okay. We're, Good. we're pushing forward with this. Um, I do want to say one thing about the brokerage. This brokerage is going to be the only type of brokerage that that's out there as of right now. Okay. We're going to be fully transparent 100% for the carriers, the small, uh, small carriers, 
owner operators, majority of the money is going back into their pocket. And then we're also looking at getting the uh, store prices down too, as well to save the consumer side. So it inadvertently, if, if you get relief on that side of the supply chain, just for, you know, yep. do, do people understand that that translates into it's going to make their, people that have nothing to do with anything other than they have regular jobs, they have kids, they have families, they have mortgages, car payments, insurance, like we all do. Uh-huh. And it will help them a little bit on the everyday staples, the everyday necessities for life. Yep. I mean, this yep. affects people that have nothing to do with trucking. And that's what I think that needs to be made even more clear as we go forward, that it affects everybody. Like Mike was saying before, everybody's got to eat, right? So, yeah, yep. you're affected, whether you know it or not. And, the, and knowledge is power. And the fact that you're going to do it no matter what, I commend you for it. I really do. I'm not just saying that. You know what I mean? I really, from someone from the logistics field like I was, and even the fact that I'm not now, I have a soft spot, uh, I, a soft spot for, for people like yourself that, I mean, this it's not easy. Like, people just think that you guys make all this money and, yeah, they pay some insurance and whatever, but they're, they're well compensated. Yeah, but you're getting squeezed. You're getting squeezed from all ends. And it's like a, a puzzle piece. One's taken out and another one's taken out. And it's gradual, yep. but it's noticeable until there's nothing left but your bills don't stop. Your landlord doesn't say, yeah, no, that's cool. Or, uh, you know, the bank will be like, yeah, you know what? Don't pay your mortgage to hell with it. You know what I mean? Just go and bring that orange juice where it's got to go. No, people don't understand. Well, not to mention we got to keep these trucks running too, just so we can haul these loads and make money. And if you're off the road, you're not making money. If you're not running, you're not making exactly. money. Bottom line, that's, that's never changed. So, yep. so you got Tuesdays and Thursdays <clears throat> at two o'clock. In the afternoon, and I try to get in when I can. I've met a lot of nice people like yourself, so you know, God bless you, man. Because as things, you're in the the infant stages of what's going on right now uh, with with the website and and making stuff on the flat. At the same time, as trying to make a living, it's not like you could put that on the side. Yeah, let me live off of this huge nest egg that I have while we yeah. try to do that. Yeah, in a perfect world. Yeah, right? it's yeah, <laughs> not even close to it. But you, but you don't give up. You're resilient. You struggle, but you don't quit. And that's what makes yep. you a man. And uh, I think that more people could follow that business model, that character model. Uh, that's something that you should be proud of yourself. No matter what happens, you know that you gave it everything. You and Michael, and we'll talk to him in a second. Give it everything you had for Americans, no matter who it is. Um, it's, it's commendable. For, like I said, I can't even think of a better word right now, but... I'm in awe that there's still people like that that actually give a shit. They care and not just about themselves. This is not a selfish thing that you're doing. You're not going to make a ton of money that you're going to pocket. You're redistributing. You're putting money yep. back into these people's pockets and it's revolving. You're paying it forward, so to speak. I think that that's awesome in any in any industry, but especially this. It's so damn important. That's why I wanted to make time and we're going to if it takes a series of 10, then we'll do a series of 10, whatever it takes. I promised you guys from day one, and I'm trying to deliver for you whatever I can do to help not just your stuff. There's going to be other people that we're going to have on that's going to be talking about other things in the trucking industry and, and that kind of thing. But you have something that, that it's like a baby that's just about to be born. And and I think that that's uh, – I think the sky's the limit with that because – I mean, it's just, it's a great idea what you have. And, and it was born out of necessity, which most good ideas are. And um, I think that that's great. I appreciate it, Chris. All well, right. We we're... appreciate you for giving us this platform and getting our voices out. Absolutely. I told you. It I'm means whatever. a lot to us. Well, you're welcome. I, um, and I meant what I said. That's not for ratings. That's truly how I feel about you guys. Um, like I said, that's how I ate. That's how I was able to grow up because of that industry. And uh, no matter what happens and how well we do here on the radio and and uh, everything going forward, I do a lot of stuff for charity and everything. But this this is important. I knew that it was the first time I heard how passionate that you were and how passionate Chris uh, is. You know, what I'm talking about Michael and and you guys get a little fired up in there. I'm like, listen to him. And he's like, one guy was trying to give you some shit, and you're like, look, pal, 
that's not true. Like you, you weren't trying to sugarcoat. I mean, not the truckers are known for being like, you know, hey, look, the name of this show is the Meme Machine. This is a match made in heaven, baby. So, uh, you know, so in closing, let me put that. So we'll take Chris's off of there. We all know that it's uh, you can follow Chris and uh, you can find out where he is on uh, on Twitter, on X at uh, Chris Benick zero nine six. And you have my man, Michael, right here. Michael, uh, as we close it out, and we wrap it up. There's your uh, there's your handle for those that can't see that are listening. Michael's handle is at Michael five zero five nine one one three. That's his Twitter handle there. And I'm guessing on the website, Mike, you're going to um, I see that you have just like the Facebook one on there. But eventually you're going to have like the Twitter one and, you know, your other stuff. It's still building, uh, I'm guessing that way. Cause some people don't have Twitter, but they have Facebook or they have Instagram or yeah. whatever it is. And you got to hit on all of those. I think that's a great idea. Well, the, the biggest problem is, is that's GoDaddy's setup, and we just barely changed over two days ago. It's and awesome. my brother is hard at work right now. Uh, I just talked to him a couple hours ago, but he's hard at work getting it all switched over, but it's all reprogramming everything. And uh, for those that don't know about it, do not get GoDaddy. Just don't bother. It's uh, Please, they nickel and dime me to death. Thousand dollars a month, not a year, yeah. a month. Yeah, that, Why that's is that not computing for me. I don't understand that at all. Well, basically, it's four hundred dollars per website for what I was trying to do for all the nickels and dimes they do, and then the websites would have been one hundred and ninety-three different languages. So that's seventy-two thousand dollars plus anything else that I wanted to put onto it. So, so I, like I had to get like maybe yeah. a little coupon or something. <laughs> yeah, go that. Yeah. Go run right out the goddamn door. How's that? Yeah, <laughs> it's go profit as you wave it bye bye. Yeah. Yeah. When, when we started figuring it out, we figured that we needed to go with a different host. But uh, yeah, um, I did want I did want to mention, though, um, we're, we're not just only uh, on on uh, our own space. You can catch us a lot of the time on We the People uh, with Marlon on, right. on X. I'm going to see if he wants morning. to come on with you guys one day. I know that you guys, yeah. a lot of things are intertwined, like we're going to be talking about the trafficking problem that, that the yes, sir. Uh, a lot of drivers, truckers uh, are dealing with. And we're going to hit all that. I spoke to uh, one of the ladies, uh, one of the head heads of uh, someone that spearheaded this for a while and deals with survivors and what's going on and whatever. It's all going to intertwine. And what I'd like to do, not that I'm the smartest guy in the world, but uh, that we're going to have uh, you along with them one day and have everybody on. You talk about a panel, man. That that's oh, yeah. I'm I'm no, you know what? Forget. It. I'm just going to edit out everything. But thank you. No, I'm kidding. But <laughs> it's so everything is intertwined because we're all Americans. Yep. It's not an easy country. It is not a perfect country, but it is the best country, and it's ours, not mine, not yours, not Chris's. It's ours. It all it belongs to us, and then for our children, it's. That's the way it should have been from day one, and it wasn't. We kind of lost sight of that, I think, in, in many things. And we don't talk about politics nope. or religion, but I felt nope. the need to to do this stuff and have you guys on now rather than later. I could have waited until you had the website perfect. Bit. Why would you wait? Because everyone's going to get sucked in right after the first or second debate in the summer. You know how this is going to go because it's, it's an election year and all the attention, which I understand it's very, very important. Don't get me wrong. I'm not downplaying it. But this needs to be the, the, the you got to plant the seed now. Yeah, uh, you just do. And you have been. I'm just giving you a different venue for people that had no idea who you are um, and they might not ever see you, which is not such a bad thing. But it's a uh, it's a, the fact that they're getting able to listen and go, you know what? Hey, honey, listen to the Mean Machine radio show. Look at the guys that they have on. They're doing a series on these truckers. These guys are talking about stuff. Is this true? Is this really what's going on? I mean, you're going to peak interest. And yeah. um, I think we that hope. That, that's great. Now, I, I, I'm going to do everything that I can on my end. But bottom line is they're not going to take it from me. They're going to take it from the guys that are in the trenches, that being you guys. And uh, a lot of the people that are like you, I've got a lot of people that are reaching out that want to be able to talk about this and talk about that. We're keeping the Noah thing obviously separate, um, but there's going to be people that are going to weigh in with that. You'll see when we're live, they're going to call in, they're going to type in the chat, be ready. Because <laughs> uh, it's uh, not that you have to go on the defense, but the fact is if you're passionate about it and you believe in it and you know that, that better days are, are 
we have to make them. We can't just wait for them to happen. Life does not stop. You know, you can't get anywhere forward if you keep looking back. So, okay, we know what we've been through. We know what we're currently in. Now let's knock that bolt out of the box and let's go to where we want to go. What is the promised land exactly? And and that lies in, in your hands. You're spearheading. This is kind of like a movement. It's not a cult. It's not some kind of rah-rah bullshit. This is real life. This affects us all once again. And I commend you and Chris for doing what you're doing because it's a very unselfish act and uh you should be proud of yourself your family i'm sure is and uh i certainly whatever i can do once again i'm going to do for you guys and i just wanted to say thank you for uh, for agreeing to be on the show um this is going to be Aaron well thanks more. for having us yep thanks for having us and like i said before you know if it wasn't for you know the little people that are you know, trying to make a, a difference in this world, we wouldn't have a voice right now because I can tell you we've been stifled every which way that we tried to go. And well, you have, uh, you got this Jersey boy in your corner, man. So well, we appreciate it. We really do. Oh, just say, look, everything's going to be fine. We have the meme machine. And that's it. And you go on your merry way. Everything's going to be fine now. See, that's all you had to do. <laughs> Everything's gonna be fine now. <laughs> we have the mean machine behind us. <laughs> That's right. And you really do. That's no BS. You know what I mean? We're gonna have you guys back real soon. Um, it's gonna be a little bit different, but this was more of a meet and greet type of thing. And um like like I said, once again, thank you for being here. Thank you for being your honesty, your candor, your ability to be able to talk, you know, and not make people who don't know what's going on or are not in the industry feel stupid or inferior or anything. You're talking about real life stuff this is what's really this isn't speculation this is true stuff i mean people can fact check it all day long and it's going to be right in line with what you and chris have been talking about and others too and i think that that's great i really do things are going to get better because you're going to make them better once again not letting them or waiting or praying or crossing your fingers you're actually getting off your ass and doing something about it that is the american way that's how this started right but. Well, it's as grassroots as it can possibly get. So anybody within the sound of my voice, you know, pass the word because, I mean, I'm just a stupid truck driver at my kitchen table right now. And he's just a truck driver driving down the road, you know, after this show ends to get the load to California. And, you know, without without the people, we really don't have a chance. Without unity, we really don't have a chance. United we stand, divided we will fall. Well, that's what the ad said, and that's a good way to put it. As as we're ended up right now, it is, and and that's the ad that that we ran. It's uh, you know, uniting, you know, uniting the trucking industry. That was what we put on there because that's what it is. It's not kind of like that. You're trying to unite. You you want to have it being inclusive. It's not we're going to have something, and either you join or you don't join. And if not, if you're not with us, you're against us. That's not what you're doing. You're saying, look, listen to what we have to say. Let me show you the numbers. Let me explain to you what's happened, what might happen. And regardless of how the, the uh, presidency turns out, things need to get better. Uh, we're in trouble right now. Everybody, you, me, everybody, we're in trouble, you know, and uh, we need to change. You know, you can't do you can't make a change without knowing the facts, good, bad or indifferent. You know, you don't need somebody to, like I said earlier, to blow sunshine up here. Let's see how it really is in real time. And then we go from there. But every time that we go through, we started this show. Now that we're ending it, people know more than they did 90-something minutes ago. That's a plus. That's a victory in my in my book. And you should take that one. Take them where you can get them, you know. It's just the beginning, fellas. But I wanted to say okay. once again, thank you very much, Chris. Thank you very much, Michael. They have their spaces, and they're in a lot of them. And we're going to talk to Marlon. Maybe you could talk to him for me. I'd like to get that guy uh, on as well. I, I think he would be good. There's several people that are that are in the industry. Um, and then you let me know when that site is going good, and I'm going to start posting it on mine, retweeting it, putting it on our on our station stuff and everything, too. Uh, it's always better to have uh, extra people doing it. I'm trying to hit the East Coast. You hit the West Coast. We'll meet somewhere in the middle. You know what I mean? Hey, we appreciate it. We yep. really do. And like I said, any anything that you want us to advertise for you, we you know let us know. I mean, we <laughs> we got an extremely small platform. We don't have a radio station. We just got well, you know our little web page, but well, you we're more what? than willing to put it up there. I, hey, look, I appreciate it. Um, we I, got uh, the web page and social media. 
Yeah. Why not let so. it work in your, you know, to your advantage? You know what I mean? It, we've come a long way from just yep. playing solitaire on Windows 98, no? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Gentlemen, have a great night. Thank you very much. Be safe. Be well. God bless you both. And uh, we'll talk to you real, real soon. And you did a great job. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Well, there you have it, folks. Michael and Chris. And, uh, man, they're, they're special. They're special people. There's a lot of people that are like that out there. I say all the time, if you, you know, there is a lot of good people in this world. And if you can't find one, you should definitely be one. That's how you pay it forward. And I meant what I said to them. It's not about ratings. It's not about visibility. It's not about, you know, listeners and subscribers and, and money. And, and it's about getting the word out real life situations, real industries that you might or might not know what's going on behind the scenes. We tackle whatever we can, the difficult subjects, the things that are some people cringe or they don't want to hear. I don't want to talk about that. You know, out of sight, out of mind, not here on the meme machine. We don't do that. We go after and we tackle all of that. I'm fearless. My guests are fearless. And together, you know, you can't stop a good thing. You can't keep a good person down. You get knocked down, you get right back up. It's not about how many times you get knocked down. It's about how many times you can get back up. And eventually when the smoke clears, it's going to be people like Chris and people like Michael and the people that they unite, the truckers and the people around it and just everyday Americans that and those will be the ones that are going to be left standing when all is said and done. We all benefit by this in a positive way. And what could be bad about that? So if I could use my platform, do you have something to say about it? If you're a trucker, if you're in the logistics business in general, and you think you have some kind of, uh, you know, something to say about it, you know, you can weigh in. You come in when we're live. You know, we'll take the calls. We'll, we'll flash the number. Uh, we'll do all those things, you know, and, and get your take on it. Maybe you can help these guys. Maybe you want to know more, you know, before their site goes up fully. Whatever the case may be, you're going to have a, a voice, just like I'm giving them a voice. It's about paying it forward and doing something good, you know. That's the way that I see it, and I appreciate everybody watching and listening. Don't forget, you can catch us right here on New Jersey 88.6 WGAT. I'm on quite often. Uh, we don't stream every episode, but when we do, or I should say we don't stream every time I'm on the air, but when we do have guests and everything, we do have episodes, and then sometimes I do uh, monologues and uh, have something where there's nobody uh, remote guest or not. Uh, sometimes I'll make a video or something on pertinent subject or what's going on or you know, just being able to to get a word out there or touch on different thoughts and feelings that I have. And uh, you can participate in that as well. Me, machine 973 at outlook.com. If you want to drop us a line, we are on Instagram. We are on TikTok. We're on YouTube, the Me Machine Radio Show. We're on iHeartRadio and, of course, Spotify. We're a small radio station, a small satellite station right here, WGAT in the great state of New Jersey, the Garden State. And uh, the more you listen, the more you watch on YouTube, especially that helps an independent radio guy like me hang with the big boys, you know. So everybody that's subscribed this week, everybody that's been watching and listening and encouraging and sending me DMs. And that's right. They're sliding in my DMs, baby. But I appreciate it so much because there's a lot of good people out there that they haven't been seen, you know, but they are now going to be able to be heard from yours truly right here. I am Gregory Joseph, and this is episode 10. We are in season two of the Me Machine Radio Show. Thank you, everybody. Have a great, uh, well, I'll try to have a great weekend if you can, if that's possible. And uh, happy St. Patty's Day out there for, for all you people out there. You know, don't forget your lucky charms and everything else. And uh, be well. Take care of your families. Take care of each other. And once again, you know, there's a lot of good people out there. A lot of good people. If you can't find one, be one. But then again, if you can't, then just get mean, baby. That's what gets me eh, through my days. Good night from New Jersey. We'll see you really soon. And don't forget, follow us on Twitter at Gregory Joseph 70. That's my uh, my moniker on there. That's my handle. And uh, you can go and check us out on YouTube anytime. Season one is available. Season two is available on Spotify and iHeartRadio as well. And we will talk to you soon. Have a great night, people. Peace. Uh, hey, baby. Okay, let's go. Tune in to the Mean Machine Radio Show with Gregory Joseph on New Jersey, 88.6 WGAT.
your ultimate destination for real people, real life, and pop culture discussions. Join us for insightful conversations, special guests, and a lot of fun every week. Don't miss out on the excitement. Listen to the Mean Machine Radio Show. Rock me, baby.